Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, TheMediaSpeaks.com. <clears throat> Alright guys, I've got some interesting news here for everyone. A lot of it goes into the, the homeschooling thing. It's going to be coming up in a moment. Not the first story, but it's coming. I want to say before I get there, you know, I'm not one of those people that really believe that you must be homeschooled in order to get a good education. I will say that my experience in the public school system growing up was not a positive one. Um, for a myriad of reasons. Um, not a fan. However, some parents are not good teachers. Some parents have no aptitude to teach. That's neither here nor there. When I get to these stories, it's because the government is deciding these things. And I decided to do the story in the same vein that I'm leading off with from the register here. And that's because I think they tie together. And I think you'll see why. Um, feds want to find companies that refuse wiretap requests. <clears throat> More and more and more and more and more you're seeing this. Anything that goes against their tyranny, their overreaching, illegal, unconstitutional grasps, then those things are painted as things that are uh, dangerous, terroristic, evil, wrong, illegal. Listen to this. Draft the legislation to impose fines on companies that refuse to provide wiretap facilities to the all-holy U.S. federal agents is in the planning stages. Government officials have told the Washington Post under condition of anonymity. Initial plans are for an automatic fine for refusal in the range of tens of thousands of dollars, an amount that would escalate over time. After 90 days, a judicial review would be held which could double the monetary reparations and possibly impose extra charges. The solution to this is for them to tell the federal government how many different ways to get bet and don't even show up in court to find out what your fine is. If you guys, if all these companies make a block to act this way, they won't be able to shut them all down. The importance to us is pretty clear, FBI General Counsel Andrew Weissman told the American Bar Association last month. We don't have the ability to go to court to say we need a court order to effectuate the incept. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other countries have that. Most people assume that they're getting when you go to court. Well, most countries are not the United States of America, you piece of human health. That is why we are better and that is why you are not allowed to do things like that. My hope is that you will find all these companies going together. And I tied it into the story that's coming because so much of it is for the children. Anytime you hear anything is for the children, you all know what I'm going to say. It means screw the adults. That's what it means. All right, guys, here we go. The Healthy Home Economist CPS, Child Protective Custodies, uh, look up what the Hitler Youth was. Okay, this is almost the same thing here. CPS is a nightmare. If someone you know is getting into social services and they think that CPS is somehow good for children, that is wrong. What they do is they find examples of extreme abuse and make sure that everybody knows about them. But they're taking kids away from parents who have done absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever on a regular basis, time and time again, for any trumped up charge they have, CPS is evil. A Sacramento couple is without their five-month-old baby after Child Protective Services, Nazis, sent in the police to forcibly remove the child from their care. A hearing is scheduled on Monday, April 29th, which has triggered when Anna Nikolov and her husband Alex took baby Sammy, nice name, out of the Souter Memorial Hospital and sought a second opinion at Kaiser Permanente, <coughs> a rival hospital for Sammy's flu-like symptoms. Anna and, Anna and Alex, it says, were concerned about the quality of care that baby Sammy was receiving at Sutter, where he was admitted nearly two weeks ago. At one point, Anna questioned the antibiotics that Sammy was being given and was alarmed that the nurse administering the treatment didn't know why the child was receiving them. Antibiotics for the flu. 
Anna claims that a doctor later said that Sammy should not have been receiving the medication. When doctors began discussing the possibility of heart surgery, the parents decided to leave without a proper discharge in order to have the child examined elsewhere. If we got the one mistake after another, I don't want to have my baby have surgery in a hospital where I don't feel safe, Anna said. She added, we went from one hospital to another. We just wanted to be safe, that he is in good hands. While at Kaiser Permanente, it says, the police showed up at their request of Sutter. Sutter. The police told the parents that staff at Sutter had told them that the child was in such a bad state, as Anna put it, that they thought that the baby was dying in our arms for the children, Sammy, for the children. God, I hate that. After the police saw that baby Sammy was in fact fine and examined medical records that clearly stated that Sammy was clinically safe to go home, they laughed. The attending doctor at Kaiser said, I do not have concern for the safety of the child at home with his parents. The next day, police came to Alex and Anna's home. Alex met them outside and was slammed against the wall and pushed to the ground. His keys to the home were forcibly removed from him and the police entered the house to take the baby. Anna's home video of the incident shows police entering the home. I'm going to grab your baby and don't resist and don't fight me, okay? Sacramental scumbag piece of human filth police officer is heard saying in the video. You know what? It should have capped him like you should a normal Nazi. Should have been the one that was looked at like she was nuts. And I'm not saying that I want you to go shoot the police officer. That is not what I'm saying. I'm glad she didn't. But had she, you could argue that she was in her rights to do so. These People have no jurisdiction here. CPS is a Nazi group. By that I mean fascism taking your children from you, not killing Jews. News 10 of Sacramento spoke with police on this situation and were told to talk to Child Protective Services. Little Nazi bastard said, oh, I'm sorry, CPS, said little about the case, only saying on Thursday, April 27th, the child was taken due to severe neglect. Yeah. CPS spokesman Lauren McLashlin said, We conduct a risk assessment of the child's safety and rely heavily on the direction of our health care providers. They have no right here! Alex sums up the situation well. It seems like parents have no rights whatsoever, he said. Indeed. And that is entirely true. I like this. The moral to the story. Tick off doctors and nurses at a hospital and they could very well sick CPS on you with police breaking down your door in short order. Think long and hard before taking your children to the hospital, my friends. Once you go through that door, the medical decisions about your child are no longer in your control. So it might be best to go to a naturopathic doctor first, and uh, if it's something that involves a medical doctor, you know, like a, a break or something, they'll send you there. And, uh, you don't tend to lose, I don't think, as much of your freedoms if you go that route, at least initially. Now, you know, if the kid's convulsing on the floor or something, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. But if it's questionable, you might want to seek going somewhere else first. Uh, LeeRockwell.com. Uh, before I do this, I want to say make sure you check out the Charity Connection and donate to Dana Mowgli Christ, who um, is suffering from cancer. And she is somebody who has done a lot to alleviate the suffering of other people who've had cancer. So we all need to get together and help her. Lee Rockwell, we're just average folks. The family's sending all 10 of their homeschooled children to college by the age of 12. A mother who homeschools her 10 children in Montgomery, Alabama, has opened up about how six of them began their college degrees by the age of 12. Those of the Harding siblings who have already graduated from college have gone on to become a doctor, an architect, a spacecraft designer, and a master's student. After another two, 12 and 14 years old, are finishing up their degrees, but despite the Harding's incredible achievement at such young ages, their parents, Mona Lisa and Kip, men have named you, I had to, insist they are a family of average folks who simply find and cultivate their children's passions early on. Hannah was the first to take her college entrance exams at the age of 12. I didn't expect to pass, the 24-year-old said to Today.com. So I started crying because I was thinking, now what? She passed the exam and 
at just 17, became Auburn University's Montgomery's youngest ever graduate, getting a BS in mathematics. Wow, not an easy subject, so you can't say she walked through it. I get to this, and you're going to want to read the whole article. Why did I mention that? Why was that, you know, besides the fact that it's pretty damn amazing. Spread Liberty News. Americans warned a homeschooler stripped of rights. Of course, anything that actually works and doesn't have federal oversight isn't welcome in a fascist or a communist regime. Look it up if you think I made that up. Um, look up, look up what Stalin did. Look up what uh, you know, not even Hitler. Look up what fascism looked like in Japan. Look up what it looked like in Italy. You don't need to go to Adolf Hitler. Look at what these people did. Look what Stalin and Lenin did. And now look at the kind of rights we're losing here. The trouble with the analogy is that people automatically start going to the extreme. And Jews getting gassed, uh, sick experiments, Joseph Mingula, thousands slaughtered. That's because that's the way it ended. People like me are out here warning about this because... What we see now is how that started. And we're trying to prevent it from happening again. Recently, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, what a wonderful person he is, has said that homeschooling is not a parent's right. It is a statement some, say, some are saying should frighten American parents. Again, maybe you don't homeschool. I, you know, I don't know if I ever will if I have kids, and that's a long questionable, but... I don't know. I don't know if I'd be any good at it. But I sure as hell do not want the government telling me whether or not it's my right. Because it is damn well my right. Nations like Germany and Sweden show that when governments take away homeschooling rights, it is a slippery slope to no parental rights. The Romeike family came to the United States from Germany five years ago hoping to find refuge. They wanted to homeschool their children in freedom, and a federal judge granted them asylum. But now the Obama administration has been trying to deport them, arguing that homeschooling is not a right. The case is currently before a federal appeals judge. But you know, if they had climbed a fence on the Mexican border, they might be allowed to stay. Yui and Hanelor Ramke began homeschooling in Germany because they didn't want their children exposed to things like witchcraft and graphic sex education that were taught in German schools. There were stories where school children were encouraged to ask the devil for help instead of God. And actually, the devil would help in the story, you said. Well, it goes on and on and on. But the most disturbing part of it is that Obama has stepped in and Eric Holder has stepped in, questioning whether or not you have a right to homeschool your own child. And yet, I'm somehow the nutcase for saying that our country is looking like a fascist regime. Regime? How is that? And this is even more interesting. Uh, part of the story: Russia, a homeschooling haven. Nations like Germany and Sweden could learn a thing or two about parents' rights from, of all places, Russia, Russia which is one of the freest nations in which to homeschool. We have complete freedom of home education in Russia in terms of legality, Pavel Partnativ, a family rights advocate in Russia, said. So guys, they're coming in every possible direction to strip parental rights away, to spy on your internet, and to do everything that they possibly can. Meanwhile, I wonder how many people listen to the entire show that I just did and are somehow still not getting it. Dear God, if you are one of the ones that are getting the message, please share this video. Please share the message in it. Please help me tell people because it's going on in droves. Um, a lot of you guys know that I end uh, with something different, and I'm going to do so here, and I'm going to do it from a different angle than what you would think. Many of you know I wear this when someone has died, and unfortunately, someone very talented has in fact died. Before I get into this, I want to say I am not in favor of censoring anything. I don't care what you sing about. I don't care. It's fine. I don't think it should be censored. Don't in any way. Is that clear? The other thing I want to say is I don't know how much art is theater and how much of it is real life. 
reason I'm going into this as a precursor, if you will, is because Slayer guitarist Jeff Hammond dead at 49. Uh, I picked Billboard.com, but there's there's many um, many places to go to find it, and you're not going to look for me to end this the way that I'm going to, but I think you're going to see why. Founding member, member of pioneering thrash metal band dies of liver failure, and you're thinking the alcohol, the alcohol, nope. Just over two years after contracting a rare skin tissue disease, Slayer guitarist and songwriter Jeff Hammond died on Thursday from liver failure at Helmet Valley Medical Center near his home in Southern California's Inland Empire area. <clears throat> Slayer made the news public Thursday afternoon, announcing that the band is, quote, devastated and calling Hanneman, who was only 49, their bandmate and brother, Twitter quickly filled with messages from fans and fellow musicians, many of whom were in Los Angeles for the fifth annual Revolver Golden Gods Awards. If you remember, that was the, that's one of the last, that might have been the last public appearance that Dio did. That award ceremony's cursed. A show at Club Nakia disturbed a device frontman David Draymond was among the very first posting R.I.P. to the Titan of Metal, while drummer Mike Portnoy wrote, Wow, I'm in shock. R.I.P. Jeff Hanneman. Basically, he got a spider bite that went in, and the, the, the bite itself wasn't so bad. He didn't even know that it happened at first. It was a couple of years ago, like I said. But it began to eat away at the tissue and whatnot, and that's the worst. It says he contracted necrotizing phallocytis, most likely from a spider bite, and quickly progressing, a quickly progressing disease that literally eats away the flesh from deep layers of skin and tissue. Exodus's Gary Holt, another great guitarist, stood in for Hanneman, and uh, so did Pat O'Brien. The reason I mention this is because if you're a Christian, I am. I don't have a problem with theater. Um, again, I don't think I, I think deicide should be legal, and it is. So I mean, I, I, I don't listen to them, but I, I have no desire to see them silence. My personal taste, I should say, is I like obituary, I like uh, death, uh, I like the bands that were more theatrical with it. I don't get into the Satanism thing. I'm a, history has shown, look at Job, look at other books from ancient religions. Anytime Satan's ever been given a free reign to do whatever he wants to do to somebody, just like he did to Job, he didn't make Job a great and wonderful person. He ruined his life, killed his wife, killed his kids, killed his crops, gave him boils, ruined his life. I don't get into the Satan thing. And I, who knows if, if uh, Hanneman was really satanic or if it was just an act. And again, I'm not saying for the last time, that he needed to be silenced. That's not my point. My point is this. I had to learn to walk again, Hanneman says. This was when he, uh, after he was done with the surgery for this. And heavy doses of antibiotics to uh, suppress the infection, it says. I'm also quoting metalinjection.net. I had to learn to walk again. I hadn't stood up for a month, apart from anything else. The skin grafts were very painful, and all of the muscles and tendons in my arm were very weak. That was okay, though. I count myself lucky that the nurse and doctor knew right away what happened to me, because things could have been a whole lot worse. Here we go. It's the kind of thing I might have written a song about, he acknowledges. Everything that could go wrong this year did, but you know what? It turned out okay. Satan had my back. I love the final quote the article says. Well, I don't. Satan cursed Jeff Hanneman. Hopefully we'll see him back on stage soon. So now you've got them hoping he gets cursed by the devil while he thanks the devil for his healing. Well, he went from okay to dead. And I'm not saying that's what caused it. I don't believe it is. I'm saying this. If you don't believe in God, I'm not going to try to make you. You can believe it. Like I always say, you can worship the moon and uh, the mighty mice men that live there if you want to. I don't care. What if he's wrong? What if he was satanic? If he was. I think they were atheistic or agnostic myself from the interviews and uh, DVD I've seen. What if he's wrong? I mean, and I, I, guess, I guess that's the big question here. It could all go at any time. A spider bite, done. 
if he had been a normal person and uh, didn't have insurance or something, he might have died of the spider bite. It says in the uh, metal injection article that he was only one hour from death at the time that the doctor saved his life, his arm, and his career. That's what I'm saying, people. Be careful of things you say, because who knows? My personal belief is he's probably regretting that right now. But in any event, rest in peace, Jeff Henneman. Uh, you brought much to music. Uh, I had I, I was, somebody said earlier that she, she didn't know who the, uh, she didn't listen to Slayer, but she knew who they were. Well, you know what? I don't listen to Aretha, but didn't know who Jeff Hanneman was. And I said I don't listen to Aretha Franklin, but I'm well aware of who she is. And she's like, well, Aretha Franklin's uh, an icon. Soul music sounded like soul music before her and after her. She wasn't talentless like Rihanna or something, but she didn't change anything. She just did a style very well. Slayer and Henneman was their founder. Slayer changed music. Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and you could argue maybe Venom and Possessed to some degree, changed metal. It was like Sabbath and Zeppelin. And then it changed. And these are one of the people that did it. They made it more technical. They made it very, very complicated to play. And they made music a better quality, and they added a lot to music, even if you disagree with their message, as I usually did. So, Slayer, Jeff Hanneman, sorry to hear about what happened. Rest in peace. Good night, friends. God bless. You are listening to the correct views. Please donate to the show if you can, because your money goes right into the show to make it a better show. Uh, check out TheMediaSpeaks.com. Kyle, Court, D. Lake, and myself are always posting Make sure you check out the movie, too. Uh, we just finished a movie at the Media Speaks. It's called Becoming Paul Revere. And if you get a chance, check out the Passing Time video for War on For Your Mind. Edited by Kyle Phillips. Good night, friends. God bless.